the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Friday, September the 30th, 2022. Thanks for checking us out on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Yes, we have made it to the end of a bye week. In fact, we've made it to the end of the final bye week of the season for the Thai Cats. Yeah, happy Friday to you, the final. Day of September, I was about to say final Friday of September, but uh, the final day of September. So we appreciate you sticking it out with us this week, and uh, we're back next week from practice where the Ticats are getting set for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. That game on Friday, it is the Wall of Honor induction night, and hopefully you'll join us for the game, and hopefully you'll join us for the ceremony beforehand. Yeah, on Thursday at Carmen's, uh, the uh, the Hall of the Wall of Honor induction. Ceremony dinner honoring Danny McManus and the 1972 Grey Cup champions celebrating their 50th reunion. Uh, yeah, that's happening at Carmen's. Uh, so you can still get your tickets and go to tightcats.ca for all the details on that. Uh, nothing to tell you about when it comes to practice. Uh, that That's quite obvious because the Ticats haven't practiced. Uh, but today is a National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. And uh, keep your eyes peeled. Because a uh, very special uh, feature that uh, Dane Evans was working with, uh, Donovan Bennett, uh, and the CFL, that's going to be dropping very soon. And I will uh, relink to our chat with Dane last year on uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day. As uh, as we we all know by now, Dane is very proud of his Indigenous roots, as he should be, and uh, is very vocal about them. Again, as he should be, and uh, it's always nice to see him take a stand, and uh, it's great to see. So, uh, a, a Truth and Reconciliation Day that today is today, uh, and hopefully, you take some time to reflect on uh, some of the some of the horrors that uh, the Indigenous community has suffered, and uh, some of the great things that they are are doing and have done uh, throughout Canadian history. Uh, all right. Uh, in the meantime, lots going on at Tim Hortons Field this week. Despite the bye week, you had a be fit day yesterday. You had uh, first on the field, both presented by uh, First Ontario Credit Union. Uh, and to discuss that and talk a little football, very pleased now to be joined by a Director of Community Partnerships for the Ticats. He's also a former Ticat himself and an analyst here on the Ticats Audio Network, Courtney Stephen. Uh, Courtney. Uh, the players may have been away, quote unquote, technically uh, for the bye week, but uh, a lot of players sticking around, a lot of players taking part this week, uh, a fun week at, at Tim Hortons Field. Man, there's no bye weeks in the community. We always got an opportunity for somebody to come through Tim Hortons Field and, and have a great day. So we've been doing a lot and we've been having fun doing it. Let's talk about the uh, first on the field program. A couple of days over the last week, uh, you know, it's first of all, it's great to see the guys out. And I know you talk about that a lot um, in terms of the guys getting back to the love of the game. Uh, But for these kids, what does it mean? What were you hearing from them? Well, first on the field flag football is presented by none other than first Ontario. It's a, a program that introduces people to the game of football. And we love football in all its forms. And honestly, it's, it's a growing game. While tackle football has been one that some parents were almost reluctant to get their kids involved in over the last many years, uh, flag football has been growing extremely fast. And it's something that we're very excited to support in and to help introduce kids to, especially when the first time they play flag football can be inside of a huge stadium that maybe or maybe not, they haven't got a chance to go down on that field, touch the grass and and throw the ball around. So it's a lot of fun. And the guys love it too. You never really have to beg or plead. They, they volunteer, they step up gladly because it brings them back to a time when, when football was literally just about having fun and going out there with your friends and getting sweaty. So we, we love ourselves on flag football here in Hamilton. What does the program consist of? What, what, what did the day look like uh, over Tuesday and Wednesday? Well, the first on the field program is awesome because uh, our partners provide some some gifts for the kids. And when they get there, they get the full experience from the time they arrive. They step off of the bus. They go into their own locker rooms where every kid has their own nameplate, just like a pro. And underneath of that, they get a bag, the first Ontario, first on the field flag football bag. Inside, they've got a bunch of toys, some things like a, a ticket to an upcoming game. Um, and then they also they get a flag belt. And when they put on their uniform, their T-shirt and all that, 
Uh, we bring somebody into the locker room. This week we had none other than the number 21, Simone Lawrence, who is known <laughs> to hype up the crowd a little bit. Oh, so yeah. The kids excited. And then they get to run onto the field through the tunnel where the players would enter the field. They do some drills, they learn the game, and then they finish with uh, some flag some flag football. So it's yeah. it's a whole experience for them. Lots of memories made, and, and it's a ton of fun. Yeah, I, I, I can picture myself, uh, you know, the first time I walked on the field at, at Tim Hortons Field, it doesn't matter what you do, how old you are. Uh, there is something special and uh, memories. I'm sure that those kids will will take with them. So hundreds coming through for first on the field. And then Thursday, uh, also with our partners at First Ontario Credit Union, uh, it was Be Fit Day. And this one's cool because this is, I mean, this is everything. This is the whole organization, all hands on deck. Uh, tell us what, what went down yesterday. Yeah, another one with First Ontario uh, and also with the uh, Grain Farmers of Ontario. Be Fit Day is all about celebrating everything that it means uh, to be a healthy, active, and engaged youth in the community. So we have, you know, a, a snack station where they have healthy foods. We had the financial literacy station. Uh, we had the Forge FC soccer club out there teaching kids how to pass and score. We had the dance and cheer team teaching people how to stretch and warm up and then also giving them a little dance routine to do. And then, of course, we had the Thai cats doing passing, catching, and tackling drills. So it was it was a ton of of different opportunities for people to be active because at the end of the day, it's, it's what it's about. It's about um, giving people not just things to keep them busy, but then also educating them, putting a little bit of the medicine in the candy of, yeah, we're going to play a game, but it really means something to get out and, and work a little bit every day because that's what's going to make you a healthy person. And that's what uh, we need to be focusing on with this platform that we have is giving kids the tools to, to live the best life they can financial literacy were you taking some notes there i know you're you're always learning i know you're were you taking some notes in the financial literacy part of it today or, or yesterday Man, there's or always a nugget for everybody in every <laughs> lesson so it was it was cool to have that booth set up by first ontario they did a great job yeah uh let's talk about the tie cats team where they stand right now four and ten uh, you know this is kind of the question of the week when talking about and it, it nobody's going to talk about it you know when they're back is is that game against montreal they're going to want to move on but we still got to spend some time on it because it's not that the Thai Cats played poorly, they just didn't play well enough. And I mean, that's the that's been the story of the year so far. And I I, I like what you said though. It's it's not that they got to continue to look backwards. They got to look forwards because they're going on what will be a seven game playoff run starting this coming game, and they're going to need every ounce of energy they have. There can be no plays at the back of the playbook that are are untouched. They got to come out and pull out all the stops. And really, if if this team is going to salvage the season, which can mathematically still be possible, then it really just starts with uh, the details. And this season has had a lot of big plays, a lot of so close moments. I think the difference is, can they make the big play when they need to make it? And we've seen in the past, there's been teams in this league that, you know, not had the best season and went on to be in the playoffs and eventually some of those teams even won the great cup. So I know it may sound like a hoop dream right now, but there is still hope. So for the black and gold faithful, I, I encourage everybody to just, you know, keep your, keep your faith because this team has been to the great cup the last two years. There aren't too many ingredients in the pie that's changed, but you just have to put it together, play four quarters. Like that is the main thing. Uh, putting it together. I thought it was really encouraging to see Dane put, back-to-back -back games, no turnovers, protecting the football, efficient passing. And more than that, back-to-back -back games where Dane looked like himself. He he had some confidence. He had some swagger. Didn't have the touchdowns, but uh, encouraging sign from number nine. Yeah, and when your quarterback is playing like that, that's contagious. And I think you see that transfer over to a lot of the other position groups. But I've said this uh, before. I want to give a huge shout-out to the offensive line. Yeah. All right? They have been – heroic in the last two games and nothing that Dane has been accomplishing would be possible without the effort that they've been giving and you know you like to see the change up that we've had in the run game as well uh, that's that's continued some drives that's given some other opportunities and when you have that tool in your tool belt uh, a great running back who can get you five yards a pop that gives you more options so first down or second and short you not necessarily just have to throw that 
screen pass or do that misdirection, which the tie cats are known for, you can mix it up and you can hand the ball off and, and, and maybe West Hills picks up the first down that takes a little pressure off Dave. And that gives guys like uh, Tim White and Stephen Dunbar Jr. more opportunities to make the big one. Yeah. I mean, second and second and three, second and four, a whole lot manageable than uh, second and 10. And uh, yeah, Wes Hills. I mean, he's one of those guys where, you know, he is, he has put in his time. You know, we, the coach O talks about the waiting room with this team, the practice roster. I mean, Wes Hills has been around and I I'll give this one to Milty. He's been saying it for, for weeks, for months, for two seasons, that when Wes Hills gets in the lineup, he's going to create some damage. Other than just the the downright power, what else have you been seeing out of him? Well, I think one thing that you don't see or that a lot of us wouldn't be able to see is the fact that he had to be staying prepared uh, to be a mm-hmm. pro to step into the situation. Because, of course, there's the runs that you make um, and the, cast- the catches that you make. But to be a professional running back, you also have to be involved in the blocking scheme. And a running back in the CFL is going to block more than they are going to carry the ball. And I think his ability to step in, keep Dane protected because the running back is also a part of that. And to know the playbook and to be confident and for the coach to demonstrate his confidence in him. That's just a credit to him being a pro and being ready to step in and take full advantage of his opportunity when he got it. Another busy week coming up uh, for you, of course, with the Wall of Honor induction for Danny Mack. There's the Wall of Honor induction dinner. Uh, you know, we talked to Tony Gabriel this week. Uh, you know, Morelli and Hitcher are obviously talking about the '99 team a lot. What does it mean to you as an alum of this team and as an employee? I mean, really, your your two roles because you got you got your alumni hat right that you you get to do these things you still got to work i know you're a busy man so but what does it mean when you get to see these group of guys you know the the, the 72 champs mingling with the 99s with some 86s thrown in there i mean like w- what's it like for you as just like a fan and and uh, of, of the game but also a, a fan of what these guys have accomplished well it just goes to show how how rare winning it all really is mm-hmm. is that a group like the 72s would come back together 50 years later to, to still talk about it or the 99 team. Um, they have a different type of bond. Right. And so whether you're, you're in it or you've been close to it or you've been around it, it just really exemplifies, you know, what all the hard work that every athlete in every sport is, is putting in and what the, the fruit of that labor looks like. So it's pretty cool to be around. It's awesome to hear the stories of, of those vets who, who paid their dues. And um, it's great to build relationships because I think one of the things here in Hamilton that we have is, is a great culture. And that culture is just the culmination of all the stories and all the efforts that have been put in by people past. So we're just trying to take that torch and carry it. I was, I was about to say, I think I've heard it. Uh, if I And if I had a nickel for every time I have, I'd be a very rich man. But uh, I think something about standing on the shoulders of uh, of those who came before us, I know that is a, a sentiment that's been echoed uh, in these hallways uh, in the past few years, uh, especially. But uh, no, I, I, I know you're a really busy guy, Court, so I, I appreciate you doing this and uh, have a fantastic weekend and good luck next week. Should be a lot of fun. I appreciate it, Luke. And my thanks to Courtney Steven for joining me today. My thanks to you as well. Uh, Before we go, uh, I did acknowledge off the top that today is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation uh, to honor the children who never returned home and survivors of residential schools and their families and communities. Uh, And as we commemorate the tragic and painful history and ongoing impacts of residential schools, uh, acknowledging that this is a, a vital part of the reconciliation process. Uh, Dane Evans has a great piece with Donovan Bennett. It's now available on uh, the CFL.ca, you know, all their social media channels. I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, But before we go, I am going to play this uh, little clip here from Dane last year uh, on the subject of the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and uh, asked him, uh, you know, why, why he's so vocal uh, about, about his indigenous roots. You know, it's just something that I've always always grown up trying to be proud of you know obviously every kid wants to make their parents proud or make their friend proud or whatever but to me i've always wanted to make my tribe proud and and i was alluding to this in another interview like obviously the name on the front of your jersey right that's who we all play for but when you get to the pro level it's on the name on the back of your jersey that's people remember you know oh that evans kid or oh this kid you know and to me that is like my direct tie-in to the tribe because 
everybody back home in Oklahoma, yeah, they know my name, they know my dad's name, they know my grandpa, everything like that. But I'm always just, and I'll, I love it, I'll always just be that Evans boy, you know? So I want to keep making them proud. I want to keep honoring my last name and honoring my tribe and just keep trying to do what I can do. And to that point, I mean, you, you mentioned that this has been instilled in you from your grandfather, from your father. What kind of role have they played in your growing up and to honor your culture like you have with the name on the back, like you say? I mean, what has it meant to have the support of not just your family, but your teammates as well? It's been huge, honestly. And uh, I think in college, you know, I played at Tulsa and Tulsa is basically was the capital of the Osage Nation, right? Um, it went up to Pahuska, Oklahoma, but basically Tulsa was like, once they found oil there, that's why Tulsa is such a big city. They, they came in and took it from the Osage Indians. But um, so just like, it's funny how life works, right? Cause I, that was my only college scholarship. And if anyone has ever been to Tulsa, you go for five seconds and you just look around, there's native American stuff everywhere. And I love it. That's why I love it there. Um, and but that's because the town has recognized, you know, where where this town came from and all that stuff. So that's what we're trying to do, you know, up here. And just my my dad, my grandpa, my grandma, um, all of them, you know, always told me just, you know, like it, it's it's not just your family you're representing. It's the whole tribe as a family. And that's something that, like you said, was instilled in me very early. And I'm just trying to make them proud. And that is Dane Evans uh, from a conversation from last year talking about uh, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And again, I encourage you to go to the CFL's website or their social media channels to check out a uh, great piece with Dane and uh, Donovan Bennett uh, produced by the league. Ticats fans, it's time to ride on our strength from now until October 13th, which is four eligible Hercules passenger or light truck tires to receive a $100 Ticats rewards card and be entered to win our road trip sweepstakes available at participating active green and Ross Ontario locations or visit Hercules tires.com slash a G R rewards. Uh, before we go, a couple of shout outs to end the week. Uh, first of all, to Bob Cowan who retired this week after 21 years at the helm of uh, CHCH's Morning Live. Uh, I only got to work one show with him on Morning Live a few weeks ago, uh, but he is uh, he's a, a, a great uh, ambassador for the community and uh, great at what he does, and he will be missed around the halls at CHCH, that's for sure. Uh, congratulations to Tim Bolin, who is stepping up into that anchor chair on CHCH Morning Live. Again, uh, a great person uh, and a great guy, and uh, I can't wait to see what he does with it. And before we go, congratulations to my friends, uh, Dr. Uh, Trent Murphy and uh, Dr. Steph McClellan, who are getting married this weekend in Collingwood, uh, which should be a lot of fun. So uh, a lot of congratulations to go around to uh, end the week. And uh, congratulations to you. You stuck it through it uh, with us this week. We appreciate it. Our third and final bye week. Uh, we are back from practice tomorrow. Uh, excuse me, Monday. I will not be here tomorrow, uh, but on Monday I will be. Uh, so thanks so much for checking us out all week. Uh, we'll talk to you on Monday right here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. I'm Louis Butko. Hope you have a great weekend. Tie Cats today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tie Cats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.